Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary, uh, uh, students, uh, UTC uh, folks, and colleagues. It's my great pleasure as a director of the Frame Mobility Research Institute, a TR1 University Transportation Center, to host these events that is focused on the student success and to welcome you all to the regional UTC student spotlight. I was so pleased to see so many submissions from our students from the region uh, for this virtual event. We have around, uh, we have uh, around, uh, uh, we had around 40, 50 uh, uh, presentations that we have to do peer review uh, so we can fit in our program. And also we have more than 180 participants. The regional UTC student spotlight provides a very unique opportunity for all of us, for people from academia, industry, and, and state and federal agencies. This virtual event will provide an opportunity for our students of the universities in the Southeastern region to present their recent research sponsored by USDOT and their innovations. The regional UTC Student Spotlight Committee members from University of Florida, University of South Florida, FI, Florida International University, Florida State University, Clemson University, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University have worked extremely uh, hard from summer 2020 to prepare this outstanding virtual conference uh, that uh, is hosted by FAU. Also, I'm humble and grateful uh, to my team that helped me to put this event together. I will not be able to do it without their help. An impressive number of student presentations, as you are going to see uh, during the, the day, has been assembled for this visual event in five different sessions. Actually, we have a very difficult time to choose the right ones because all the, all the presentations that have been submitted were good. And the sessions are on transportation resilience, really important these days, and transportation operations, smart cities, smart infrastructure, frail logistics, and connecting and automated vehicles. Now, I'm especially honored to welcome uh, Ms. Diana Fogsworth Roth, the Deputy Assistant, Assistant Secretary for Research and Technology at the United States Department of Transportation. She seeks to ensure that research, development, technology activities across the department and the 40 university transportation centers are fully aligned with the department's area of interest. She manages the department's spectrum interests, including GPS and the 5.9 gigahertz band. She oversees the, uh, the Bureau of Transportation Statistics, the VOP National Transportation Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the Transportation Safety Institute in Oklahoma City, uh, in Oklahoma. Prior to join USDOT, Diana was acting assistant secretary for economic policy at the United States Department of Treasury. She has been a senior fellow and director of Economics 21 at, at the Manhattan Institute for Policy Research and an adjunct professor of economics at the Georgia, George Washington University. She previously served as a chief economist of the United States Department of Labor Chief of Staff of the President's Council of Economic Advisors and Deputy Executive Secretary of the White House Domestic Policy Council. Ms. Uh, 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 Fosker Roth is the author and co-author of six books and hundreds of articles on economic policy. She received her uh, Bachelor in Economics from uh, Smart and More College and her uh, Master in Economics from Oxford University. Diana, thank you for your participation. Well, thank you so much for that kind introduction. I speak at many events over the course of the year to technologists, business leaders, engineers, and more. These kinds of student-focused events are among my favorite. They inspire hope 
that the best and brightest minds in our universities, that means all of you, will discover ways to address the tough problems of our transportation systems and make life better for millions. Before I offer my prepared remarks, I want to say how proud I am to be a naturalized citizen of the oldest continuous democracy in the world. Yesterday and in prior days, citizens went to the polls to vote for their choice of president and candidates for other offices, just as they do every four years. Congratulations to all of you who took the opportunity to do so this year, in spite of the public health emergency. And uh, either today or in coming days, we're even going to find out who won the election. Now, since some of you were up late last night watching the results, I know that I was. We need some light entertainment. I want to share this video about engineering talent. It made me laugh and reminded me of one of my sons who makes the bicycle wheels that won the Giro d'Italia bike race last week. I hope it will make you laugh too. So here is uh, the video. I'm worried about little Dilbert. He's not like other kids. What do you mean? Yesterday, I left him alone for a minute and he disassembled the TV, our clock, and the stereo. That's perfectly normal. Kids take things apart. Oh! The part that worries me is he used the components to build a ham radio set. Oh, dear. Is that bad? Normally, I'd want to run an EEG on him, but the machine isn't working. It's worse than I feared. What is it? I'm afraid your son has the knack. The knack? The knack. It's a rare condition characterized by an extreme intuition about all things mechanical and electrical and utter social ineptitude. Can he lead a normal life? No. He'll be an engineer. Oh, no! There, there. Don't blame yourself. Will it go away over time? It might, but pray it doesn't. If an engineer loses the knack, the results can be devastating. And in further news, you might want to get on those... Thanks for filling in for our regular doctor on such short notice. I was in the neighborhood. Knowing that today's conference contains rich and detailed student presentations on what did you learn is a joy. Getting to hear what you are actually learning is invigorating, especially for me, a former professor at George Washington University. I always used to worry that my students were not learning to present their knowledge in written form, which is important in the policy world, the engineering world, as well as in academia. I assigned a couple of papers each semester, and my students could choose to rewrite the papers until they were good enough to get an A. Of course, they could stop at the first version and settle for a B or a C, but few of them did. Education and cultivation of the workforce are key components of the University Transportation Center proposals and funding awards. The hosts and organizers of today's regional conference show how important this work is. It deserves some mention in my talk. Many of the centers stress developing the science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM pipeline, as does Florida Atlantic University. Diverse candidates and first-generation students are encouraged to enter these fields, and such encouragement begins as early as possible in kindergarten through 12th grades. The centers also aim to create opportunities for undergraduates to conduct research and learn from center leaders about cutting edge research in their fields. In 2019, when Dr. Kizar received the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance World Class Faculty Award, he modestly noted his own background. Then he spoke about the real heart of the matter mentoring and the value good mentoring has in building future technologists and engineers who can solve transportation problems. As he put it in a video for his world-class faculty award, quote, 
I love to mentor students because we believe they can be the principal force in improving the future, unquote. Mentoring from top transportation researchers motivates those in the STEM pipeline to consider careers in transportation engineering. And of course, the US Department of Transportation is glad to have more graduates come to us from places such as Florida Atlantic University and the consortium organizing today's conference. My senior advisor, Steve Polzine, used to teach at the University of South Florida, and I have at least two other South Florida graduates on my staff, Alastair Kane and Alex Bond. Centers such as the Freight Mobility Research Center also model the right stuff of research progress and knowledge growth, interdisciplinary and open to learning across the rigid boundaries of specialties. Human behaviorists, economic experts, computer scientists, engineers, military experts, and supply chain managers are all in conversation with one another, just as they are here at the Department of Transportation. The researcher's question is not simply, what can I know for certain, but what can be learned from other disciplines? My Office of Research and Technology and the Department of Transportation have been focused on the issues for today's conference with seriousness and financial support. Issues include strengthening backup to our GPS satellites, the 11 technology demonstrations designed to improve positioning, navigation, and timing, and the highly automated safety system center for excellence, which we are just setting up. To show you the extent of the problems, jamming has long been a threat to GPS. NATO military drills in the Baltic Sea with 40,000 troops and all 29 nations participating experienced GPS jamming. And spoofing is even more of a problem. If your system is jammed, you know it because it stops working. If it is spoofed, you might not know because it keeps on working, but takes you in a different direction, like to a place where you might be carjacked or where your ship might run aground if you are at sea. Spoofing was discounted as a threat for many years because it was complicated to perform, but the University of Texas brought it into the public eye. The university successfully spoofed a drone and an $80 million yacht. The activities of University of Texas Professor Todd Humphreys, on, who is on one of our new University Transportation Center's research teams, were featured in the New Yorker this past summer on August 6th. Um, no, there's just less. Excuse me, like can, you, can you all mute? Someone's not on mute. So I was going to say that Professor Humphreys was featured in the New Yorker on August 6, 2020, in a lengthy article by Greg Milner called How Vulnerable is GPS? Answer, very vulnerable indeed. I was glad to read that article because it brought GPS vulnerability to an entirely new audience, a group of lay intellectual readers or people who needed clear explanations of the technology and the gravity of its vulnerabilities to attack. In the video we just saw, it would be the mom who would be reading the New Yorker, not the engineer. The more that these moms get to know about GPS vulnerability, the more support we will get here at the Department of Transportation for making it more resilient. GPS technology is everywhere. It is the invisible utility, the last free utility and an essential technology for the timing systems used by mobile phone networks, electrical grids, and trading systems. The New Yorker's writer's metaphors make visible this complex, invisible technology. In testing a bogus signal sent to a drone in the desert of Southern New Mexico, the spoofer was, in essence, 
whispering lies in the drone's ear, feeding it inaccurate information about its location. Shrewd scientists discovered that picking up a heavily encrypted military radio signal was like gleaning information about a sealed letter by looking at the envelope's content. Phantom signals combining elements of both jamming and spoofing were a new front in the GPS signal war, thought Todd Humphreys. Quote, if an authentic signal is a light bulb thousands of miles away, the fake signal is a high wattage spotlight filling your field of vision, blinding you to everything. As writer Will Self noted in a 2016 article in the UK Guardian, quote, we may associate GPS mostly with the warm tones giving us turn by turn driving directions, but the amount of critical infrastructure that now depends on the system means that were it to go down, civilization as we know it would very likely collapse. But these days, even teenagers have figured out ways to spoof GPS by using chips in their phones in Pokemon Go, an app-based augmented reality game based on GPS. Who knew that a simple video game could be so educational? If teenagers have figured out how to spoof the GPS on their phones, it's not surprising that others with more malicious intentions most certainly have done the same. The work of many of our tier one university transportation centers aligns completely with the high purposes and long-standing focus of the Department of Transportation. As Secretary Elaine L. Chow stated, quote, we must ensure that reliable positioning, navigation and timing services are available to meet current and emerging transportation applications and supporting infrastructures, such as communications, energy, information systems, with the goal of reducing deaths and injuries on our highways, rail systems, transit, aviation, and maritime modes, and ensuring America's transportation network continues to be safe and technologically advanced. As an economist leading the Office of Technology and Research, the 1.9 million grant recently awarded to Carmen was a wise outlay of support. Carmen, in this case, is not an opera, although I do wish I could give grants for the performing arts, but it is the Center for Automated Vehicles Research with multimodal assured navigation, a new tier one university transportation center on GPS resilience led by Ohio State, together with the University of Texas at Austin, the University of California at Irvine and the University of Cincinnati. Its proposal impressed us. The university transportation center leads noted that anti-jamming an anti-spoofing technology exists, but it is expensive and reserved mostly for military use. This new university transportation center will focus on seeking an affordable solution, especially needed as more and more cars deploy GPS to navigate, autonomous vehicles rise in popularity, and drones rely increasingly on pre-programmed destinations. People will not be comfortable getting into an automated vehicle or with platooning driverless trucks headed down the highway if they think their GPS might be spoofed. Robust and resilient navigation is essential for success with automated and autonomous systems. The Highly Automated Safety Systems Center for Excellence is an exemplary project in this goal. Funded by a $5 million add-on to the department's budget, it aims to achieve resilient and rel reliable positioning, navigation, and timing. It will do gap analyses, develop public guidance, sharpen analysis of standards and systems, and be a resource to all the modes within the Department of Transportation. 
the new Ohio State University Transportation Center complements the new Center of Excellence for Highly Automated Safety Systems. Projects the department is undertaking now have the potential to make GPS receivers more resistant, perhaps even immune to interference with GPS signals. In early 2020, the department completed technical demos of a number of GPS complementary backup technologies. The result will be a selection of one or more technologies to meet a congressional mandate for a terrestrial system to back up GPS signals. These projects and efforts will result in PNT services that will be much more secure, flexible, and useful than our current over-reliance on GPS as a single source. This effort will take years to build its successes. The work of university transportation centers is indispensable in building long-term success. As we round the corner to Thanksgiving, it seems right to quote from W.H. Auden's famous poem to, quote, let all your thanks be thanks, unquote. As Joseph Epstein wrote in the Wall Street Journal back in 2007 about wishing the wise poet was still alive to join him at his Thanksgiving table, quote, to be living in a prosperous and boundlessly interesting country at a time of high technological achievement, much to be thankful for here. Wisdom, I'd like to tell the poet, says Joseph Epstein, you got it right, kid. Now, how about a drumstick? My colleagues and I are most grateful for having places such as Florida Atlantic University, your students and your partners laboring on these technological achievements. Thank you for devoting your minds and hearts to protecting and innovating these systems. And I'm looking forward to hearing about your work during this conference. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Really appreciate. Uh, um, I have seen you in many, in many uh, student competitions, in many events, and uh, I really appreciate uh, from your. Uh, you took time from your busy schedule, uh, um, and join us today. I really appreciate. Thank you, and also I would like to thank the, uh, uh, all the all the USDOT team that uh, for their support all these years that they are we are working together thank you well, well thank you so much for inviting me i really appreciate it